Hey, so um, this is my first attempt, I guess, at a discussion example, I think. At least the first one you've seen this semester. Alston and Josh have done most of them. Um, but we're going to do a simple clutch problem. Well, yeah, just a straightforward clutch problem, not necessarily super simple. Um, and hopefully between this and the suggested problems, uh, you'll be pretty well set for the quiz. But um, please follow along. Make sure everything makes sense. If it doesn't, ask. And... Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll all be better prepared. Okay, so uh, here's the problem. And this is mostly straight out of the book, right? An automotive clutch, as shown in figure 18.2. Right? What's 18.2? So much editing to do. Okay, so here's um, typical clutch. Uh, the dark blue part spins all the time. It's connected to the engine. The light blue part, when pressed against the dark blue part with these friction plates here, uh, it will also spin if it's held together tightly enough. Um, if you compress these springs or, or you, you move this away, right, with some other mechanical mechanism, we won't worry about that. Um, if these are not pressed together hard enough or if they're not even touching, um, the blue, dark blue part continues to spin and the light blue part does not. Okay, so that's the basics of a clutch. Um, so let's see what else. Uh, it has inside and outside radii of 160 and 240 millimeters. Um, the book problem says diameters. But if you use diameters, you don't get the right answers that the book gives you, right? So the book meant to say radii, but the book wrote diameters. So this is slightly different than what we'd find in the book. All right, so anyway, 160 and 240. So the radii are uh, 160 to the inside of the pressure plate and 240 to the outside of the pressure plate, okay? Uh, clamping force is provided by nine springs. Nine springs. So what does that look like? Um, so instead of this... Yeah, we've got nine springs. Maybe we'll draw a picture of that in a sec. Um, each compressed by five millimeters to give a force of 900 newtons. I'm going to change that to each. Uh, when the clutch is new, uh, the molded friction material provides a conservatively estimated coefficient of friction of 0.4. All right, so that's a reasonable friction coefficient. Uh, when in contact with the flywheel and pressure plate. Maximum engine torque is 280. All right, so what is the safety factor with respect to slippage of a brand new clutch? All right, so let's draw a picture of a brand new clutch. So what does this look like? Um, we've got some part, let's do these parts in um, black. Um, so we have some part that's rotating all the time. So we'll call this our flywheel. And um, then over here we've got uh, the pressure plate. Let's see if I can draw a nice straight line there. And then um, there's some clutch material. Let's do that in blue in between here. All right, so not the, not the best drawing. It'll do, and then we've got um, nine springs that are holding these together. So let's draw some springs. So nine springs. Right, and then uh, the back of this thing, you know, I mean, this is oversimplified, but let's say they're compressed like this. Uh, so in here, right? So delta, so they're compressed at five millimeters, right? So for its free length, the spring gets compressed by five millimeters. And uh, so F spring for a single spring equals 900 newtons, okay? And uh, so that means F total equals, well, nine times 900 is 8,100 newtons, okay? So um, the springs are compressed. It's pressing the blue part against the black part. Uh, and currently it's brand new. We can see that the blue stuff is all the same thickness. Let's make this all the same thickness here. This is the friction material, asbestos or something of the sort. Uh, so that's that. All right, so what else do we know? Um, it's compressed five millimeters, 900 newtons each. Okay, so has a friction, okay, whatever. All right, so the first thing is, what is the safety factor um, with respect to slippage of a brand new clutch? All right, now, when the clutch is brand new, um, the surface is square, 
right? And then so we go down here, and by square, I mean, you know, that it's, we have this nice square profile here. The, the thickness of the friction plate or the friction material is all the same everywhere. So the pressure uh, is the force divided by the area, right? And so I can figure out the area of this. That's, you know, pi r squared minus r squared. Uh, and uh, this is evenly, so it's even pressure. Okay, that's key thing. So brand new. Never been used. Fresh out of the box. All right. Uh, and so we've got some equations. We know that the total force um, equals uh, this thing here related to the pressure. But we've done a lot of the algebra already. Um, so we can really just get down here to this relation, right? So that directly relates torque to uh, force. All right, so let's see if I can remember how that goes. Uh, and we just have one interface here. So n is equal to 1 for all of these. So I know I'm trying to do this by memory now. Uh, torque. Uh, equals uh, the force times the friction times uh, our outer cubed minus our inner cubed uh, times our outer squared minus our inner squared. Okay, so that's the torque equation. Um, and let's go through and check off what I know. Uh, I know the total force. I know the friction coefficient. I know the radii. I know the radii. I know 2 and I know 3. All right, so that means I can calculate my torque. So 657... 657 Newton meters. Now it's important to keep your units straight, right? This has to be in meters. Uh, this stuff has to be in Newtons, right? So let's, let's make a note of that. R has to be in meters, right? We can't use millimeters, we'd mix up our units. Uh, but I wanna know the safety factor. Uh, of this. So um, n, so this is an important intermediate step. Put a dotted box around that. Uh, so n equals the torque of the clutch divided by the torque of the motor engine. Uh, and that equals, uh, let's see, 280 newton meters. So um, 280 Newton meters and 657 Newton meters. And so that means my safety flasher, when it's brand new, and I'm going to call that flat because my clutch material is nice and flat. More on that in a second. Uh, works out to be 2.345. 2.345. All right, so that's my safety factor when it's brand new. The next part of the question is, what is the safety factor after initial war, initial wear has occurred? All right, after the initial wear has occurred. All right, so let's draw a picture of that. Um, after some initial wear, it's going to look like this. So I've got the same you know, drive shaft coming out of here. And I've got this thing looks more or less the same. Try to draw it a little straighter than I did the last time. Now this time, because it's going to wear unevenly, my pressure plate is going to start to look like this. And this is a little exaggerated, um, not too much. It's going to be much, much thicker um, at the interior than it is, so this is kind of an exploded view. <laughs> our springs. Okay, so now um, because it's going to wear, uh, when I first push on it, right, the pressure is the same everywhere, but the velocity is much, much greater at the edges. Right, so since the pressure is the same everywhere, the velocity is greater out here, it's going to wear faster. I'll make the note of that in, I don't know, blue. Uh, wear is faster here. Um, and so it's going to wear there. So when we say after the initial wear, uh, 
what that really means is now wearing evenly, okay? And uh, all that really changes is uh, the equation we use. Okay, so this was the brand new, uh, what does this say here? Assume uniform distribution of interface pressure, brand new, right? We use this equation. Um, now when we move on to uh, assume uniform wear, right, which, which once it kind of the, the outer edges wear down like this, uh, now it'll start to wear evenly, right? Um, then we get a new equation that looks like this, right? And, and I highly, highly encourage you to go through these derivations. Um, but now it's R plus R over 2. I think that's the right equation. Yeah, times the number of things. And so what do I know? I know the force is uh, 8,100 newtons times uh, the, what are the two radii? Um, 160 plus 240. Uh, 240 plus 160 millimeters. Oh, but I got to convert that to meters. That won't work, so I got to do 0.24 and 0.16 meters. That'll cause me a units problem. Um, times the coefficient of friction, which is dimensionless, uh, divided by two. All right, and um, that will give me uh, 648 newton meters. Right. Uh, let's do a quick unit check here. Newtons, meters, and that's all I've got. Yeah. So 648 newton meters. So n, let's say worn, right? When it first, you know, the initial wear is gone, that becomes my 648. 648 divided by my engine torque. And so that gives me a safety factor of 2.31. All right, so what was it? So that gets a box, right? Because that's one of my answers. Uh, what was it before? 2.34, and now it's down to 2.31, right? So wearing it down a little bit uh, didn't hurt us too much, all right? So uh, I think we're doing all right. What do we do here? So we got, what is the safety factor? Brand new, what is the safety factor after initial wear? Uh, how much wear of the friction material can take place before the clutch will slip, right? And this is what happens when you have an old Volkswagen van, it's a flow of your friends on your way to go skiing, and, um, and then the clutch cannot provide enough torque to get up the hill, and ask me how I know that. So uh, the next one, we've gotta say how much spring uh, can wear, or how much material can wear away. So now, this will take a while to draw, These springs are giving me 900 newtons each, right? I know they're giving me 900 newtons each. And my friction material looks something like this. What happens when I wear some of this stuff away, right? Let's say this much gets worn away. So this is all gone. This gets worn away. So this is all gone. Well, what happens now, these springs expand. Uh, to push the, the new material um, onto the, the, the flywheel, right? So my force goes down, right? Because, um, you know, this wears away, so the springs you know, expand a little bit to account for the fact that that material is wearing away. Okay, well, that means um, I should be able to figure out, uh, right now, I've got all sorts of force to spare, right? I know I've got 8,100 newtons of force, and it gives me this huge safety factor. Um, when will the safety factor go down to one? Or another way to ask that question is, um, at what force 
uh, well the clutch start to slip all right that's not the question they're asking me but that's a question I can answer right and so I, I go back to my Warren clutch equation which looks like this f f r plus r um, so I can um, let's write that equation down right now I know that uh, I know I'm interested in w when I can just barely handle my engine torque so that becomes 280 uh, I don't know my force I know my friction uh, I knew my two radii and I know two right so I can plug this stuff in and so that means my force <clears throat> Uh, that will just barely allow this thing to work uh, works out to be so this is my minimum force for no slip right this is not the answer I want but this is a really important intermediate step so I'll put some boxes around that all right but what do I, I I need to know how much material is going away here right my real question is that so that has to do with the spring constant all right um, so I know a little bit about springs and um, let's do a quick review of that all right the spring stiffness K equals force over displacement delta right uh, and so typically that's uh, Newton's per and in for these springs we'll call it millimeters right uh, I know that for my particular springs uh, I got a force of 900 Newtons uh, when it was compressed by five millimeters uh, so that means the K for my spring uh, is 180 uh, newtons per millimeter for each spring right so that's a pretty important intermediate step put a dotted box around that and so if I go back here um, 3500 newtons right is my minimum force so I divide that by 9 uh, so for each spring uh, the F min equals 3500 divided by 9 uh, and that equals uh, 389 newtons okay well now we have to know just a little bit about springs uh, as most of you surely do so the the spring can expand and ready this is gonna be crazy some delta delta right delta Delta. Just, I'm going to use this equation here. And that goes down there. And I know the K uh, is 180 uh, Newtons per millimeter. Um, and that will be, relate to a change in force of 900 minus 389. And that relates to a uh, change in compression of five minus delta nu. Right. And so when I go through and solve that, um, this is gonna be less, right? So it, it's not compressed as much anymore, right? And so my delta nu becomes 2.16. the new compression which means my delta delta right the change in compression is 5 minus that uh, so that's 2.84 millimeters that's a very important step right so um, my change in force related to a change in compression change in force change in compression 
Um, and so that change in compression, the, you know, the, the new force or the new compression is 2.16, the old compression was five, which means the change in compression, how much did the springs expand to make up for this worn away material uh, is 2.84, right? Well, actually, yeah, so that's the same. Let's go back here. So the amount the springs expand and still provide enough force matches the amount of material that wore away. So um, I can say that wear sub max equals 2.84 millimeters. And that is the answer to our problem. There we go. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. Um, please show up at drop-in lecture. Please show up at discussion with lots of good questions.